What's up everybody? Welcome back. So it's officially season 12 in Go Back League. A new season meaning new dreams and new opportunities but the spice continues on this channel because in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a very unique and interesting double ghost line basically featuring the brand new Ice Punch Haunter along with Shadow Claw Runner Regis in the Open Great League. Now Ice Punch isn't necessarily the most useful move on Haunter. Yes, it's going to provide some neutral coverage in specific situations especially against normal types and some normal flyers like Pidgeot, Noctowl etc. It's going to provide that super effective coverage which is really nice. And as far as Runa Regis is concerned, Shadow Claw has absolutely catapulted it into pole position. It's now number 13 on PvP as far as Open Great League is concerned. And it's pretty solid. It's got a pretty unique typing as well with uh, it being a ghost and ground type similar to Golurk. Obviously now with access to Shadow Claw. And overall, this team isn't the best team out there. It is ABA weak to grass, not the most effective team comp. But then again, these are some early rank battles, so I guess you can get away with it. Although these were pretty competitive battles, honestly. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's some really fun battles in here, and let's get straight into it. So moving on to the first battle here, we have Azumarill on the lead against a Medicham. Honestly, this team, this entire team kind of beats Medicham, which is really nice. And they are staying in, which is fine by me. I'm gonna just basically stay in and go for the play rough right now to either force the shield or do massive super effective damage. It actually gets the shield, which is really nice. Again, this backline is gonna do really well when shields are down. They make a switch into their Tropius, and this is one of those specific situations where Ice Punch is gonna come in clutch, right? Because Ice Punch is gonna do double super effective damage because of the grass flying typing on Tropius. So I'm just gonna go for the Ice Punch here. Ice Punch, as you can see, just near one shots the Tropius were able to Shadow Claw down as well, which is really nice. And out comes a Bast here down. So obviously, this is not a pretty negative matchup for Haunter. I'm just going to spam out as many Shadow Punches as I can to do a very minimum neutral damage. As you can see, Shadow Punch barely does anything. I'm able to get to another Shadow Punch as well. Uh, and surprisingly, it actually gets the shield from Bastiodon. So that's that's actually really good for me because I can come in with my Azumarill and basically one-shot the Bastiodon from this range with a Hydro Pump. We can let anything go through right now, even though my Azumarill is not an XL Azumarill. I mean, all three of these Pokemon are pretty trash IVs to be honest. But, uh, I mean, both Azumarill and Haunter I built, like, over a couple of years ago. So, I mean, I'm just going to stick with what I have. Uh, but anyways, back in comes Medicham here. I mean, it is a power-up punch. We're going to soak that. And then immediately switching into my Runerigus to catch the next power-up punch. Obviously, this is double resisted. And at this point, this game should be over because we have a shield advantage as well. And uh, they are building up quite a bit of energy. This is enough for an Ice Punch. It is going to be a double-boosted Ice Punch. But I want to let it go through to see how much it does because we still have an Azumarill anyways. So even if that would have knocked out, we could have won that. But then again, as you can see, Runorig is, is able to tank that quite comfortably. And then Shadow Ball is going to pretty much one-shot the Medicham there. So moving on to the next battle here, we have Azumarill into a Galvantula. Pretty negative lead, honestly. So I'm immediately going to save switch into my Haunter, which doesn't really have the best matchup against Galvantula. As you can see, Volt switch is tearing through a Haunter here. But we are able to win the CMP tie on the Shadow Punch. I'm going to let this go through. Most Galvantulas do tend to bait, so there's probably a Lunge, which is double resisted. But that still does quite a bit of damage, given how glassy Haunter is. But that's fine. Uh, at this point, I'm actually going to come in with my Runerigus right now. Runerigus is probably one of the harder counters to Galvantula that you'll see, because both Lunge and Discharge are resisted, right? Lunge being single resisted because of the ghost typing whereas uh, like if, uh yeah whereas discharge being double resisted because of the ground typing right we're able to soak it and comfortably shadow claw down and they have a scrafty in the back i immediately switch into my azumarill and they come in with their scomly this is fine in the two to one shield situation this is a pretty comfortable matchup for azumarill i'm definitely going to shield this up because i mean i might as well shield the moves coming from scomly because there's nothing scrafty can do against azumarill right assuming they're not running acid spray i'm going straight for the hydro pump here it does get the shield right now and i'm just going to shield it uh whatever they throw right now it's probably just a sky attack but i'm just going to shield this up because we should be able to get to a hydro pump before they can get to another move here uh, it's gonna be close right now i'm able to get to this hydro pump as well and this comedy is just about in hydro pump range right now so hydro pump will be knocking out this comedy and once again crafty is just not gonna be able to output enough damage to take out the azumarill before we can get to a player off here it doesn't matter what they go for these boosted counters or power up punch or even foul play is not gonna KO from this range doesn't matter what this is any one move we can survive from this range and we're just, yeah, we're just gonna soak that up and then immediately go for the play rough and this will absolutely one shot this crafty there. We still had absolutely loaded energy on Runerigas in the back. I actually wanted to switch out and get off a couple of moves, but I didn't want to risk it. I just wanted to guarantee the win con with the play rough there. So moving on to the next one here, we have Azumarill into a Blaziken, a pretty solid beat here and they make a switch into their PGR. Now this is a battle where I made a couple of mistakes. Actually, one thing I throw on inefficient timing, allowing them a free, pretty much a free turn, a free gust worth of energy which is really bad for me uh, but anyways i'm just gonna let it go through typically most pidgeots tend to go feather dance uh, immediately so that they can lower our attack 
and I switched into my Haunter here. I, I wasn't worried about throwing on correct timing because I was hoping that Ice Punch would one shot it regardless. But it actually doesn't. As you can see, Prigiot still able to hang on there, which is unfortunate. Ice Punch still did quite a bit of damage, as you can see, but uh, just not quite enough damage to take it out. So I'm able to Shadow Claw down in the Haunter here. Unfortunately, we are debuffed as well. Uh, so whatever is going to come in is not going to take too much damage, right? They actually come in with their Skarmory. I'm able to fire off the Shadow Punch here. This is probably not going to get the shield from Skarmory because, again, it just doesn't do enough damage. Uh, and at this point, I'm actually going to come in with my Azumarill and probably try to get a Hydro Pump before they can get to two moves here. So we can live a Sky Attack from this range. So I was assuming this is going to be a Sky Attack, which is why I let that go through. But they make an incredible play and go straight for the Brave Bird there. So now it's all up to Runarigas to basically be able to close this out. And this is where I make another mistake. I fired off the Sand Tomb right away. I mean, pretty much like giving them the indication that they didn't have to shield that. And I'm going to have to shield this because this could be a Brave Bird as it is there. I'm able to shield that and I'm able to fully farm down as well. Now at this point, I need to bait with Santom. I mean, if they don't, if they call the bait, I pretty much lose this game. And I go for the Santom here and they call that bait and that is very unfortunate for me. Now I'm going to go straight for the Shadow Baller. This is probably going to get the shield from the Skarmory as it does there and that's very bad. I probably should have gone for two Shadow Balls. I don't know if I would have made it. It would have been close, but I probably should have committed to it. But actually, they decided to go for Brave Bird there. I mean, probably a little bit of an overkill, but yeah, even Sky Attack would have probably just about done enough damage to take, it, take us out there. Probably would have been close, but yeah. Uh, anyways, moving on to the next one here, we have Azumarill into a Jellicent here. Pretty neutral matchup this, obviously not the most favourable for Azumarill. So I'm actually going to stay in and soak up a Shadow Ball, bank a play rough, and then switch into my Haunter right now. As you can see, these Shadow Claws are absolutely tearing through the Jellicent. Hex damage is really adding up as well, that's fine. I'm going for the Shadow Punch right now, gets the shield from the Jellicent, they make a switch into their Scrafty, that's fine. Actually, Haunter has a decent matchup against Crafty because those counters are triple resisted and as you can see Ice Punch really does that does quite a bit of damage against Taunter right and I'm gonna let this go through I'm gonna call the power of punch bait which it is it is triple resisted and even though Haunter is glassy there's no reason to shield any fighting type moves so I go for the Ice Punch on what should be a CMP tied to the next power up punch which is fine this power up punch still even though boosted it's definitely not gonna KO but unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to get to another move as you can see counter damage really adds up as well uh, and I'm actually gonna come in with my Runarigas and shield once and farm all the way down because again I want loaded energy on Runarigas and Runarigas with loaded energy is going to be devastating towards endgame especially with Scrafty out of the way it's very likely that whatever they have in the back is likely to be weak weak to ghost right they actually come back with their Jellicent I go straight for the Shadow Ball here this will absolutely one shot the Jellicent from this range and they have a Nidoqueen Queen in the back and Nidoqueen Queen honestly has very little play against Runarigas they could still go for Earth Power but we still had a shield advantage so there's no way they were going to win that Moving on to the final battle of the set and of the video, we have a Zoomerill into a Galarian Stunfisk here. Honestly, I'd ha I'm happy to see this on the lead because my backline definitely does not want to go up against a Galarian Stunfisk. I mean, Runarigas has a decent matchup against it. I mean, Haunter, probably not so much, especially with, when you don't have hard-hitting moves like Shadow Ball. But I'm going straight for the Hydro Pump right now. Hopefully, they know Shield, but unfortunately, they come in a Shield there. So that's not good for me. And... Uh, I'm just gonna let it go through. I'm hoping that they bait with Rock Slide, but they go straight for the Earthquake. That's okay. I immediately switch into my Ronarigas right now, and then I'm just gonna fire off the Sand Tomb here to do super effective damage and also lower their defense at the same time. And now they make a switch into their Azumarill. This is obviously not a great matchup for Ronarigas. We're taking super effective damage from Bubble, but then we're gonna do quite a bit of neutral damage with Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball, right? As you can see, that does a decent amount of damage there. And then I should be able to get rid of the Shadow Ball. I'm definitely gonna shield once. Because I don't think Azumarill can bubble down anyways. They have to throw another move to KO the Runarigas. And then I'm able to get to the Shadow Ball as well. Shadow Ball will be taking out the Azumarill or getting the shield. Which it does get the shield. Immediately switching into my own Azumarill and going for the play rough. Unfortunately, play rough is not going to do enough damage in this matchup. to Take it out. Which means that Azumarill is going to be able to come out of this matchup with a lot of loaded energy. I'm actually going to bring back my Runarigas to basically soak up a move from Azumarill. And I'm hoping that Haunter with a shield is going to be able to sweep whatever they have in the back. Ice Beam comes through, takes out uh, the Runarigas, and then I'm able to Shadow Claw down with Haunter, and they have a Trevenant in the back. I'm able to get to a Shadow Punch here. Shadow Punch, I'm hoping, is going to one-shot the Trevenant, but they actually survive with literally one HP. They make a switch into their G-Fisk, and they get off a Rock Slide. I'm, I'm going to have to shield this. And the thing is, Trevenant is at a move, right? Trevenant probably has a Seed Bomb right now, and I realize that I'm not going to be able to fully farm down here because that would have been close. I probably should have committed to my Vincon, but as you can see that I was hoping that I could Shadow Claw on before the move came through, but unfortunately, Trevenant lives on very minimum HP, and they're able to get to a Seed Bomb there, and Seed Bomb obviously does more than enough damage to take on my Haunter there. So, probably should have committed to the Vincon in hindsight, but then, but then again, I mean, I guess... 
we would have probably got much shot down anyways. But that was a three into Saz. You can see pretty competitive virals right off the bat here uh, in rank one. Uh, but I'm looking forward to trying out a lot more of these new Pokemon or Pokemon in their new moveset. So stay tuned for that. And good luck for the new season. And I'll see you next time.